It's been interesting because in the last week or so, there's been quite a bit of media kerfuffle about the topic of indigenous science. What is indigenous science? How does it relate to Western science? Can we even put them on the same level? Is it political correctness gone mad? Am I just another social justice warrior interested in pushing a culture war, you know? Funny for a white American astrophysicist to be accused of that. It's been interesting because in the last week or so, there's been quite a bit of media kerfuffle about the topic of indigenous science. What is indigenous science? How does it relate to Western science? Can we even put them on the same level? Is it political correctness gone mad? Am I just another social justice warrior interested in pushing a culture war, you know? Funny for a white American astrophysicist to be accused of that. Our Earth-Moon system where we live is a very unusual arrangement even by the standards of our solar system, because we have this unusually large moon in proportion to the size of the Earth. And this has the moon's gravity has a very strong effect on the oceans of the Earth and generates the tides, as you say. But also, we have this unusual situation that our moon is big enough to completely cover the sun, when there's an eclipse over a large area. That's a remarkable coincidence, that our large moon should have the same size in the sky compared to the even larger sun, which of course is very far away. Our Earth-Moon system where we live is a very unusual arrangement even by the standards of our solar system, because we have this unusually large moon in proportion to the size of the Earth. And this has the moon's gravity has a very strong effect on the oceans of the Earth and generates the tides, as you say. But also, we have this unusual situation that our moon is big enough to completely cover the sun, when there's an eclipse over a large area. That's a remarkable coincidence, that our large moon should have the same size in the sky compared to the even larger sun, which of course is very far away. To put it mathematically is that, if you are concerned about a society today, you should be looking not at the value of the mathematical function, the wealth itself. But you should be looking at the first derivative and the second derivatives of the function. That's one general theme. A second general theme is that there are many, often subtle environmental factors that make some societies more fragile than others. Many of those factors are not well understood. For example, why is it that in the Pacific, of those hundreds of Pacific Islands, why did Easter Island end up as the most devastating case of complete deforestation? It turns out that there were about nine different environmental factors some, rather subtle ones that were working against the Easter Islanders, and they involved fallout of volcanic tephra. Latitude, rainfall. To put it mathematically is that, if you are concerned about a society today, you should be looking not at the value of the mathematical function, the wealth itself. But you should be looking at the first derivative and the second derivatives of the function. That's one general theme. A second general theme is that there are many, often subtle environmental factors that make some societies more fragile than others. Many of those factors are not well understood. For example, why is it that in the Pacific, of those hundreds of Pacific Islands, why did Easter Island end up as the most devastating case of complete deforestation? It turns out that there were about nine different environmental factors some, rather subtle ones that were working against the Easter Islanders, and they involved fallout of volcanic tephra. Latitude, rainfall. My own neighborhood was a pretty good example of where the reporters of the area came from. I live next door to a cop. There was a fireman across the street. 
and the most important the most awesome figure in the neighborhood worked at City Hall as a doorman. It was a working class middle class neighborhood and that's where the reporters came from. My own neighborhood was a pretty good example of where the reporters of the area came from. I live next door to a cop. There was a fireman across the street. And the most important the most awesome figure in the neighborhood worked at City Hall as a doorman. It was a working class middle class neighborhood and that's where the reporters came from. I want to delve deeper into the world of the molecules because that's where you do your work. Your speciality is protein assemblies. You look at the way DNA repairs itself, and this is all happening at the level of the cell, at the level of molecules and, of course, proteins. So you've buried yourself into what they call structural biology. I want to delve deeper into the world of the molecules because that's where you do your work. Your speciality is protein assemblies. You look at the way DNA repairs itself, and this is all happening at the level of the cell, at the level of molecules and, of course, proteins. So you've buried yourself into what they call structural biology. Well, it's a contested concept, and like many contested concepts, I think you can identify an agreed-upon core and then a sort of contested penumbra. I think that perhaps the agreed-upon core might be this. It's something held at once by academics and by academic institutions, and it is something like a privilege of freedom in the way in which the conduct of teaching and research is undertaken. Well, it's a contested concept, and like many contested concepts, I think you can identify an agreed-upon core and then a sort of contested penumbra. I think that perhaps the agreed-upon core might be this. It's something held at once by academics and by academic institutions, and it is something like a privilege of freedom in the way in which the conduct of teaching and research is undertaken. These old movies are hard to get in video stores these days. But hundreds of the old American trucks that stirring still running around on Australia's roads. We need that goes the amount of freight moved around Australia has gone through the roof in the past four decades. It's increased about nine times, and in the next two decades, it will double again. If we continue with business as usual, the impacts of pollution and congestion are going to hit the big cities in particular, very hard. These old movies are hard to get in video stores these days. But hundreds of the old American trucks that stirring still running around on Australia's roads. We need that goes the amount of freight moved around Australia has gone through the roof in the past four decades. It's increased about nine times, and in the next two decades, it will double again. If we continue with business as usual, the impacts of pollution and congestion are going to hit the big cities in particular, very hard. In Russia, in Turkey, in Hungary, in a number of other places, authoritarian leaders or liberal democrats are attacking universities because universities are free institutions. Once you've attacked a free press, once you've attacked the courts, what's your next attack point? It's going to be a university.
So we see what's happening in Hungary as part of a much wider global pattern, and that's why I think it should be of concern to Australians. In Russia, in Turkey, in Hungary, in a number of other places, authoritarian leaders or liberal democrats are attacking universities because universities are free institutions. Once you've attacked a free press, once you've attacked the courts, what's your next attack point? It's going to be a university. So we see what's happening in Hungary as part of a much wider global pattern, and that's why I think it should be of concern to Australians. What we knew was that paper had been invented in China and we knew that paper had been made in Europe from the early, late Middle Ages, and then. But we didn't realize no one had really studied what happened in between. So, what I did was I started looking at what happened to paper between its invention in China and its introduction into Europe and use for printing. That's how I got interested. What we knew was that paper had been invented in China and we knew that paper had been made in Europe from the early, late Middle Ages, and then. But we didn't realize no one had really studied what happened in between. So, what I did was I started looking at what happened to paper between its invention in China and its introduction into Europe and use for printing. That's how I got interested. We're going to have short written assessments which will happen every fortnight. You will all be broken up into small groups. So feel free to ask any questions as I go along. And I'll also ask you to participate. So if you don't like to open your books to page 1. We're going to have short written assessments which will happen every fortnight. You will all be broken up into small groups. So feel free to ask any questions as I go along. And I'll also ask you to participate. So if you don't like to open your books to page 1. The first migratory birds from Asia are showing up in Alaska. It's an annual event, but this time the stakes are higher for human beings. The federal government is spending millions of dollars to see if those birds are carrying H5 and 1 the deadly strain of avian influenza. In Alaska alone, the goal is to test on screen more than 15,000 birds this summer in full. Surveillance effort is still somewhat of a work in progress. Elizabeth Arnold describes it in this National Geographic radio expedition. The first migratory birds from Asia are showing up in Alaska. It's an annual event, but this time the stakes are higher for human beings. The federal government is spending millions of dollars to see if those birds are carrying H5 and 1 the deadly strain of avian influenza. In Alaska alone, the goal is to test on screen more than 15,000 birds this summer in full. Surveillance effort is still somewhat of a work in progress. Elizabeth Arnold describes it in this National Geographic radio expedition. Studying innovation and a lot of people would immediately think about new technologies. Nowadays we would think about apps and stuff like that. 
but what my research really tries to sort of poke at, is to understand the process of how innovation comes about. It's it's partly about the outcomes of new products and new processes and it often kind of has something to do with technology, um but I'm really interested in, you know. The process of how did these sort of novelties come about, how do they spread and, you know, I'm a geographer, so I'm then interested in where does innovation happen? Where does the process of innovation happen, and why there? Are there specific characteristics tied to a city, a region, a country that can help me explain why that innovation happened just there? Studying innovation and a lot of people would immediately think about new technologies. Nowadays we would think about apps and stuff like that. But what my research really tries to sort of poke at, is to understand the process of how innovation comes about. It's it's partly about the outcomes of new products and new processes and it often kind of has something to do with technology, um but I'm really interested in, you know. The process of how did these sort of novelties come about, how do they spread and, you know, I'm a geographer. So I'm then interested in where does innovation happen? Where does the process of innovation happen, and why there? Are there specific characteristics tied to a city, a region, a country that can help me explain why that innovation happened just there? And the future, of course, lies somewhere in between those. It's not like it's black and white or shades of grey. But putting these extreme scenarios helps us tell the story and imagine what the futures are. And the four scenarios that we did in this study. I'm going to summarize briefly just because of time. The first one is something called the global orchestration. Global orchestration, I would summarize this word dominated by the United Nations. And the future, of course, lies somewhere in between those. It's not like it's black and white or shades of grey. But putting these extreme scenarios helps us tell the story and imagine what the futures are. And the four scenarios that we did in this study. I'm going to summarize briefly just because of time. The first one is something called the global orchestration. Global orchestration, I would summarize this word dominated by the United Nations. So a dialect can be broken down into different component parts, and if you just like to take a pen and paper, I'll, I'll give you a list of the most helpful ones which over the course of the year, we will look at in more detail. So, vowel changes that's the most obvious one. Consonant changes, two that's the intonation pattern of an accent. Key, whether somebody has a minor or a major accent. Rhythm, do they have a staccato accent? Is it more lyrical? Is it flowing? So a dialect can be broken down into different component parts, and if you just like to take a pen and paper, I'll, I'll give you a list of the most helpful ones which over the course of the year, we will look at in more detail. So, vowel changes that's the most obvious one. Consonant changes, two that's the intonation pattern of an accent. Key, whether somebody has a minor or a major accent. Rhythm, do they have a staccato accent? Is it more lyrical? Is it flowing? Anyone who's ever paid attention to the warnings of climate change is aware that sea level rise is one of the consequences. 
And even though science is improving our insights into ocean and ice dynamics, and the scientific measurement of the right of sea level rise, billions of dollars worth of coastal development is still being constructed under the assumption that the stable sea levels of the past several millennia will continue. That's why international scientists have written a new book called Understanding Sea Level Rise and Variability. A comprehensive overview of current knowledge on the science of sea level rise. Anyone who's ever paid attention to the warnings of climate change is aware that sea level rise is one of the consequences. And even though science is improving our insights into ocean and ice dynamics, and the scientific measurement of the right of sea level rise, billions of dollars worth of coastal development is still being constructed under the assumption that the stable sea levels of the past several millennia will continue. That's why international scientists have written a new book called Understanding Sea Level Rise and Variability. A comprehensive overview of current knowledge on the science of sea level rise.